Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hey, let's have a conversation. I'm going to keep it brief. Terrence Crawford, man, is he in deep with the Saudis? Does he understand um, the sovereign wealth fund? Does he understand the public investment fund? See, this is a fair question to ask because obviously we still haven't gotten an answer on where that money was coming from when he initially approached PBC and they were trying to make that fight with Spence. That was before everything fell apart. Okay? He held his ground. He held his ground, which he has every right to do, as far as how much money he was he wanted to be guaranteed. Now, there, there are fighters who, when they have just one belt or no belts, going up to fight a champion with one belt, or in this case, fighter with three belts, it's not often you see where there's a 50-50 split. We get what a fighter like Terrence Crawford, you know, brought to the table. But it's just not often you see a 50-50 split. I mean, just as of recently, you saw years ago where, not that long ago, where Wilder and AJ couldn't make a fight because they were just trying to give him a flat rate. And, you know, Wilder wanted to know what AJ was going to make. And there was some back and forth, some finger pointing. But bottom line is, um, this whole thing about belts and money, just not many fighters are going to make that big of a deal if they're getting, if they feel they're being fairly compensated. Uh, but this, to just draw the line in the sand and say, hey, look, this is what I deserve. Why? Why? So I personally, I personally think, for me, that we should be talking about Terrence Crawford and uh, him having opportunities to go and make fights out there in Saudi Arabia and having uh, the right people uh, want to get behind him and put up the money for his fights in Saudi. Now, we understand here stateside he's got to get through the rematch with Spence, but if you can see here with Terrence Crawford, he's drawing the line in the sand. And he's saying, look, if you guys want me to fight Spence at 154, you know, from my understanding, we're going to take it with a grain of salt because I didn't hear this from Terrence Crawford. Uh, it's like, look, pay me more money. If not, we can fight at 147. We can leave the money terms the way things were. But if you want me to fight at 154 to make him comfortable, well, you're going to have to give me more money. Money, money, money keeps coming up, man. Everything is money. And I get it. It should be, right? Money, it's all about money. It's all about the Benjamins, right? But this whole thing with Crawford and hedge funds and the sovereign wealth fund, I, it makes you wonder just, because he didn't burn any bridges. This whole thing about the Kinahan connection and Kinahan advising him, that's done and over with. But there's still people in place who he had relationships with or he knows who are still involved with boxing. Now, I'm not saying there's any connection between Crawford and this Kinahan and the Irish mob and all that bull crap. That's, from my understanding, done and over, ship sale. But there's still people he knows who love boxing, who love him, who would love to host a fight out there in the Middle East. Um with Terrence Crawford. And the type of money that I'm sure they'd want to put up for Terrence Crawford is going to far surpass whatever he would make here. And when you know that, can't help but draw a line in the sand when it comes to someone trying to lowball you. You're going to be like, no, nah, that's not going to work. Now, the thing is, some conversations have already started as far as Crawford putting duck sauce on the fried rice with Earl Spence saying he won't fight him at 154 because he's afraid. I personally don't think that's it. I think Crawford's like, look, if I fight Earl Spence, cool. If I don't, I don't care because he knows he has options. And the other options he has, because Crawford just doesn't care. When you get a man to come out, man, who says, I don't give a F what no one thinks. I want the biggest money possible. He ain't really worried about legacy no more. He's already checked that box. But he'll go fight Canelo because that's a legacy fight. He'll fight Jamal. That's a legacy fight. But he's not necessarily chasing legacy no more. Boom. Got the T-shirt. Been there, done that. You know what I'm saying? He wants dope. So what's Crawford's next move? This is what I'm going to be watching. I got him under the magnifying glass. What's going to be his next move? You know what I'm saying? If this Spence rematch doesn't come off, or even if it does come off, 
What's next? Canelo's already acting wishy-washy. Who knows what Jamel's going to do? Want to put him in there with Zoo, Costa Zoo, or Tim Zoo, whatever the hell his name is? Have him go fight Tim Zoo? I mean, listen, let's be real about it. Terrence Crawford is a wild card. We know he's stubborn. He's going to do what's best for him. And I wouldn't be surprised if he goes out there and he gets a piece of the action. you got these Saudis that are putting up millions of dollars to attract the biggest and best best athletes from soccer, Formula, Formula One, golf, and basketball, right? They're trying to make sure the sports they're involved with, that they continue to grow and expand, the sports they aren't involved with, that they're able to get their teeth uh, into those sports and then recruit those players by baiting them in with money. Basically, it's a fishing expedition. Bait them in and then grow the sport. And with boxing, they've done something. I think they figured out a better approach. But out of all the boxers right now, who's that one fighter? Top fighter, elite fighter, big name in boxing that the Saudis could pull over there, man, and get uh, and get them um, and get them to work with them with no hiccups. Tyson Fury still got Bob Arum. He still got a team. Got Frank Warren. Uh, Anthony Joshua's got Matchroom. He's got um, uh, DeZone to worry about. He's got Eddie Hearn. Uh, Deontay Water, you know, he still has Al, Al Heyman. You know, I know he can work with whoever he wants, but he's still got people. He, he can't just get up and do what he wants. Shelly Finkel. Terrence Crawford can. And I, I, I am confident that Crawford is a smart man, and Crawford will see if there's an opportunity for him to go out there and get him to pick up a little 30, 40 million out of that sovereign wealth fund that's been set aside to help grow the economy in, in Saudi Arabia and invest in different things, sports being one of them. I have no doubt Crawford is going to be the next person to go out there and get himself some good money. And he should. But but at the same time, people, what are people going to say? The thing is, Crawford doesn't care. I think he should go get his money. Now, for those of you out there, I just did a video when it comes to the Sovereign Wealth Fund and the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia and how it's been around since the 1970s, man. It's valued at over 700, 700 billion. So for those of you out there who are wondering, Terrence Crawford, where he was talking about getting money from and people who want to put money up for him, how come he's drawing his line in the sand? He's being so stubborn. He should just take what they offer him. Why would he take what they offer him? Because Terrence Crawford knows he can go somewhere else and make real dough. That's truly what I believe. And remember, this is all a conversation. That being said, more to come on Crawford. If he still has uh, the connections with the right people out there in Saudi, is he in deep with the Saudis? Does he understand the Sovereign Wealth Fund? Has that been, have, when he was, you know, having conversations with the people involved with boxing and stuff in Saudi, were these some of the talks they had with him, like they had with Walter, like they had with Ngannou, Fury, AJ? Somebody sit down and kind of break things down to him. Like, hey, this is kind of our vision. This is where the money's coming from. This is what we're looking to pay fighters. Hey, we want to work with you. Is that something he has in his hip pocket? And I don't think that that's, uh, this is a, a far-fetched conversation. I think this is more than fair to have a discussion about. But time will tell, won't it? Anyway, keep your eyes peeled. I personally think there's still a relationship there. And the question is, is Terrence Crawford in deep with the Saudis? And that sovereign wealth fund. And is he going to get a piece of that? We got to find out. Y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.